Welcome to tutorial 3, Editing Layouts and Using Scenarios. The goals of this tutorial are to provide new users with knowledge on how to edit plant layouts and prepare simulation scenarios. Begin by opening the layout created in tutorial 2 or by opening the appropriate sample layout. Save the layout with a new name. Ensure that you are in modeling mode. If you are not already in modeling mode, switch to it by pressing the button in the upper right corner of the screen. Turn on the display grid by going to View Display Grid. Make room for more objects on the drawing board by using the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom out. Move the Influent and Plug Flow Tank objects by clicking and dragging a selection box around these items. Then with the mouse button pressed on one of these objects, drag the selected area to its new location on the drawing board. We will now make a copy of the secondary clarifier. Click on the existing secondary clarifier on the drawing board, and a blue selection box will appear behind it. Press the copy button on the main toolbar. Select the cell where you would like to make a copy by dragging out a small box in the destination cell. Press the paste button on the main toolbar and a copy of the clarifier object and all of its attributes will be made in the new location. Delete the connection between the plug flow tank and the clarifier, the connection between the clarifier underflow and the plug flow tank, and the connection between the clarifier effluent and the wastewater outfall object. You can delete the flow lines by placing the cursor at the connection point, clicking on it, and dragging to a blank area on the drawing board. When the mouse button is released, you will be required to confirm the deletion. From the flow combiners and splitters group on the process table, add one two flow splitter and two two flow combiners to the drawing board. Position these objects as presented in the video. We will now flip the combiner located below the aeration tank. To do this, select the combiner and press the mirror button on the main toolbar. The last step in setting up the layout is to connect the streams and label them appropriately. If the drawing board begins to look cluttered, the stream locations can be adjusted by placing the cursor over the stream and dragging it to the appropriate location. When an object is copied, GPSX automatically makes some adjustments to the stream names to ensure no name is referring to more than one stream. Let's make a few naming adjustments to our plant model. Right click on the Influent object and select Labels. Verify that the process label is Influent and the Influent stream is labeled WWINF. Verify that the plug flow tank process label is Aeration Tank and the overflow stream is labeled MLSS. Rename the Recycle Stream RAS. Right click on the splitter object to the right of the plug flow tank and select Labels. Change the process label to MLSS Splitter. Change the output 1 stream label to MLSS 1 and the output 2 stream label to MLSS 2. Right click on the original clarifier and select Labels. Rename the process label Final Clarifier 1, ensure the overflow stream is labeled FE1, the pump stream is labeled WAS1, and the underflow stream is labeled RAS1. Right click on the copied clarifier and select Labels. Change the process label to Final Clarifier 2, change the overflow stream label to FE2, the pump stream label to WAS2, and the underflow stream label to RAS2. Right click on the two flow combiner below the plug flow tank and select Labels. Change the process label to RAS Combiner. Change the output stream label to RAS. Right click on the two flow combiner to the right of the clarifier and select Labels. Change the process label to FE Combiner. Relabel the output stream FE. 
Finally, right click on the effluent object and select labels. Ensure that the process label is effluent and that the stream label is FE. Sometimes it is useful to add a note to the process to remind yourself about details in the model. These notes are for your own reference and do not affect the simulation in any way. Add a note to the final clarifier 2 object by right clicking on it and selecting Note. A window will appear where a brief description of the unit can be written. Enter the description and press Accept to close the note window. Save the changes made to this layout and switch to simulation mode. We will now look at how scenarios can be used in GPSX. A scenario is a collection of inputs grouped together under a unique name. These inputs can include both changes to the input parameters found within GPSX menus and new or altered data files for dynamic simulations. Any changes made in a scenario are saved under the unique scenario name and leave the base model left unchanged. Parameters that are not changed in a scenario will retain the value they were given in the base model. The usefulness of a scenario comes from the ability to make changes to your model directly in simulation mode. While you could switch to modeling mode each time you would like to make a change, this can become very tedious if you need to change a large number of variables or if you need to frequently change your layout. Additionally, making changes in modeling mode requires you to rebuild the layout each time you switch back to simulation mode, which can become very time consuming in complicated layouts. Changes made in a scenario are applied directly in simulation mode and simulations can be run immediately without needing to rebuild the model. Any changes made to the model within a scenario are saved only in that scenario. This leaves the base model as well as any other scenarios in the layout unchanged allowing you to easily track any changes that have been made within a scenario. Both the default scenario and any scenarios you have created will be saved in the layout allowing you to switch between them at any time. Now let's look at how scenarios are created in GPSX. We will now create a scenario by selecting New from the Scenario menu on the Simulation toolbar. Enter the name for your new scenario and accept the form. Notice that the active scenario name is displayed under the Start button on the Simulation toolbar. You can see all created scenarios by opening the Scenario menu and going to Select Scenario. The default scenario corresponds to the model with all of the variables set to the values defined when the model was built. We will now add some parameter changes to the active scenario. Right click on the Influent object and select the Flow, Flow Data option. In this menu, change the flow type from Data to Sinusoidal and the Influent Flow from 2000 to 5000 meters cubed per day. Notice how the font of the modified parameters appears green to indicate that these parameters have only been changed in the active scenario. Accept this form. You can view a summary of any changes made in the active scenario by going to the Scenario menu and selecting Show. The active and default values for each of the parameters will be shown and a symbol will appear next to any variables that are currently on an input controller. Create an input controller for the MLSS Splitter Split Fraction by going to Input Parameters Splitter Setup. Set the minimum and maximum values to 0 and 1 respectively. As was done in Tutorial 2, we will create a horizontal bar chart for the solids profile in the copied clarifier. First move the graph created in Tutorial 2 to make room for additional graphs on the Output tab. Next, right click on the copied secondary clarifier and open the Output Variables, Concentrations and Layers menu. Drag the total suspended solids and layers item to the blank area on the Output tab next to the graph for the other secondary clarifier. Press the Output Graph Properties button. Rename the graph Final Clarifier 2 Solids Profile and change the chart type to horizontal bar chart. Set the maximum value to 5000 mg per liter. We will now create an XY graph that has the total suspended solids from each clarifier effluent as well as the combined effluent. 
To access the concentrations leaving the clarifiers, rather than right-clicking on the object itself, bring the cursor over the connection point until it changes to a connecting arrow and then right-click. Display all three concentrations on a single graph and rename it appropriately. Set the maximum value for all variables on the graph to 150 mg per liter. Auto arrange the graphs to automatically fit them to the display area. With the stay state box checked, run a one day simulation. Using the interactive controller, change the split fraction to 0.3 and set the stop time to 2 days. Resume the simulation using the Resume button, ensuring not to restart the simulation and let it proceed until it stops. Increase the influent flow to 8,500 meters cubed per day and increase the stop time to 3 days. Resume the simulation. The graph shows the effects of the imbalanced flow on the final clarifier's performances and the combined final effluent suspended solids. You have now completed tutorial 3 of the GPSX tutorial series. You should now be familiar with how to edit layouts in GPSX and create unique simulation scenarios. <laughs>